What's good? What's going on? Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome to another episode of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast, coming to you via the YouTube airways. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, K. Sap. And today, man, we got to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, um, one of the biggest letdowns I've seen in a long time. Um, after starting the season off 10-1, and one, um, they squandered the last half of their season going 1-5. and five. But before we get off into it, man, when you come across this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you got your post notifications on so you know every time Simply Ball drops and drops another hot banger. And if this is your first time coming across the platform and you're new to the channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, post your comments out, share the video out, give the video a thumbs up, and make sure you got your post notifications on. I see everybody in the comment section, hashtag salute. And you know what my mantra is, tell a friend and tell a friend. It might not be for you, but it might be for them. Well, let's get right off into it, man. The Philadelphia Eagles stunk up the place tonight. Um, went down to Tampa Bay and got their hat handed to them, 32 to nine. Tampa Bay is led by Baker Mayfield. The reassurance of Baker Mayfield all season long has put the NFL on notice. Um, Philadelphia Eagles, man, have struggled during the second half of the season. And there's a lot of finger pointing going around. Nick Sirianni, um, I know the ownership is going to take a, a long look at it. Um, he might be let go. Um, he couldn't rally the troops. He couldn't get them out of the funk. I know tonight A.J. Brown was out of the game, but Devontae Smith, he did everything he could do to get, try to get that offense in that passing game going. Um, Jalen Hurts really didn't have a good game. I know he hurt his finger the last game, but it's no excuse. Um, Philadelphia backed their way into the playoffs, man. They had everything set up for them. And then the second half of the season, they just unraveled. Um, the identity was going. The offense was going. A lot of finger pointing. And now a lot of people are looking at Nick Sirianni. Um, Nick Sirianni struggled, man. He struggled, man, um, to get this offense together, man. They, they began the postseason on a one and five slide. You know, after starting the season off 10 and one, coming off a Super Bowl appearance, the third year coach has sought to lift the Eagles out of their rut, but they've only sunk deeper. The offense, full of Pro Bowl talent, was underperformed and shown frustration. Sideline spats have carried over intentions into the locker room, where sources say disagreements have occasionally devolved into finger pointing, demoting defensive coordinator Sean Desai and elevating Matt Patricia to defensive play caller on December 17th, it only made matters worse for a unit eventually finished 30th in points allowed. On top of the struggles, Jalen Hurts' desired direction for the offense has not materialized, which he has been a source of disappointment for the franchise quarterback, according to a source with the direct knowledge of Hurts' thinking. A disconnect between visions of Sirianni and Hurts' offensive coordinator, Brian Johnson, has affected the offense's ability to land on its identity, the source said. Now, Philadelphia's offense posted above average numbers relatively to the rest of the league during the season, but didn't match the lofty Sanders set in 2022. The Eagles 11 and six slipped from third in points per game, 28 to seven to 25th to 25 points a game, which from ninth in passing from 241 yards a game to 16th to 225 and fell from fifth in rushing from 147 yards a game to 128 yards a game. The feeling that we were underperforming weight on players even after victories. Like Devontae Smith said on Christmas Day, he wasn't happy. He said they wasn't playing well. They needed to be better and things just didn't materialize. You know, Hurts, meanwhile, threw many regular season interceptions, 15 in his fourth season, as he did in his past two seasons combined. And he was still an MVP candidate through the first 11 games when they started off 10 and one. So that goes to show, man, that, you know, this team has the potential, but the leader in Nick Sirianni, he couldn't get the troops together. So, man, let's take a listen to what Jalen Hurts had to say, man, after tonight's loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, 32 to nine to be eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, I don't think um, 
you know, I think for us this year, I just don't think we play well enough. Um, we play well enough, you know, and um, the 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 identity, um, the consistency, um, the execution for us, um, the turnovers, um, everything, all of those come into play when you're talking about um, having an opportunity to win championships and, um, you know, some that uh, some we have to be able to learn from, you know, that some we have to be able to learn from. <clears throat> there was an ESPN report that you weren't happy with the identity of the offense over the last few months of the season. Uh, can you uh, confirm that? I think just uh, where we are um, as a team, you know, we've uh, we've had, um, you know, a ton of opportunities to do great things and we haven't taken advantage of them. You know, and I've talked about the, the ownership of of that and me taking ownership for the things that I can control and, and challenging everyone to take ownership for the things that they can't control. Um, and for us to put the output that we want on the field and obviously have the results that we want and have the opportunities we want, um, it takes consistency in that. Um, there's no point to identity, um, no more than execution. Um, the reality is we have to... Um, we have to be better. So you heard what Jalen Hurts had to say, man. They just have to be better, man. And unfortunately, you know, A.J. Brown, one of their biggest receivers, was out of the game, man, um, a knee injury. Um, Jalen Hurts did finish the game 25 of 35 for 250 yards, one TD. Um, Deontay Swift, man, um, he couldn't get the run game going. He had 10 carries, 34 yards. Um Gainwell didn't contribute, man. He had four carries, three yards. Um, Devontae Smith was the lone bright spot in that receiving core. He had eight catches, 148 yards. Um, basically, outside of, you know, Devontae Smith, the passing game wasn't there. Dallas Goddard had four catches, 21 yards. Quez Watkins, three catches, 12 yards. But what surprised me is what Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did. Ty Bowles had that defense ready to play, and the offense came out firing on all cylinders. Baker Mayfield, man, he was 22 of 36, 337 yards with three TDs, man. Um, Rasheed White um, on the ground, running the ball, 18 carries, 72 yards. Um, also, in the air, Otter, um, he had eight catches, 89 yards. Uh, Moore had... Two catches, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Palmer had one catch for 56 yards and a touchdown. Mike Evans had three catches, 48 yards. And Chris Godwin had four catches, 45 yards for a touchdown. So Tampa Bay, man, offensively and defensively came to play. Um, it's it's a total letdown by the Philadelphia Eagles, man. Um, I was surprised, man. Thought Philadelphia even though they did have their struggles coming down the stretch, I thought they would get in the playoffs and right the ship, but things just didn't work out for them. And let's listen to what Nick Suriani had to say after the loss. Uh, you know, my decision-making on fourth down as far as what I, what I think and when I think it, um, but that's one I'm right there. I'm not, I'm not considering going for at that particular time. Uh, we didn't get it. Uh, we punted. Um, you know, I didn't want to give them a short field after just one possession that they've they've had. So um, that's kind of that's a little bit of the reasoning behind it. Game halftime, you about four carries. What was the flow of the offense in the first half? Yeah, we just were we were just a little out of sync. Obviously, um, you know, we had the big play to Devonte. Besides that, we were just a little bit out of flow. That's always going to start with me. Uh, wasn't good enough. Um, obviously, we're not putting them in good enough positions and. So, you know, sometimes when you're in second and long uh, and third and long you're, you're, and you're not continuing drives, it's easy to look at the stat sheet and say uh, they didn't run it enough. But, you know, there's there's things that aren't being accounted for. You're in second and long. You're in third and long. That's not, there's nothing to say that you can't run it there, but it's going to be harder to pick up a first down in those scenarios. So whenever you're out of flow like that and not in sync like we were, um, it's going to be hard to get your get your carries when you're behind the sticks. And we had a two-minute drive there as well. So, hey, listen, uh, we need to we need to be able to run it more. Obviously, we we weren't able to today to get into a flow, and that's that's on me. Third and short stuff in the season. Oh, uh, obviously we we were in a in a big slide, and 
you know, uh, anytime, anytime that's the case, I always look at myself first and I didn't do a good enough job. And, and obviously we lost five of the last six and lost today. Uh, and, and it's almost like you, you couldn't get out of the rut. We were, we couldn't get out the rut we're in and that's, and that's all of us. Uh, we'll all have to look ourselves in the mirror and, and accept that. And, uh, you know, just find, find answers, find solutions. Uh, but obviously, you know, when you start 10 and one, um, you know, and then you and then you get into what what happened for us. Uh, obviously, that the expectations were high. Man, so you heard what Nick Sirianni said, man. Um, I think his job is in jeopardy, man. Um, I think his job is in jeopardy, man. Um, the Philadelphia's ownership is not going to go for that, man. That was a big letdown. They had their self in position to at least get the number two seed and have two home games in Philadelphia, man, where the home field advantage would bode well. But in this case right here, um, they got to look themselves in the mirror, man. But it was a big letdown, man. And But to me, I still feel that the Dallas Cowboys was the biggest letdown because you had two home games at AT AT&T Stadium and you stunk up the joint. But, hey, y'all post y'all's comments down in the comments section. Let me know how you think. Um, Do you think Nick Sirianni's job will be in jeopardy? Make sure you share the video out. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. This is going to wrap up another episode of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, KSAP. We'll catch you on the next one. Deuces. Thanks for listening to the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share on all major platforms. Another one.